Hi, and welcome back. So today I'm gonna to be looking at creatine, but not for its lean muscle building benefits. There are plenty of those videos on YouTube. This time we're gonna look at 20 studies that looked into the nootropic effect, the brain effect that creatine has as a supplement. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what creatine does for the brain. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Josh Conway, where he covers a study that was recently published in the journal Sports Medicine, which looked into a substantial number of research papers that describe the effects that the muscle building supplement creatine has on the human brain. And there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Creatine is a nitrogen containing compound that is endogenously produced and synthesized in the human body from other amino acids. It can also be found in most meat and fish. Most of the research to date centers around creatine as a bodybuilding supplement that is predominantly consumed by and tested on young male athletes. That said, it appears to also have effects on women, including older women, although those effects may not be as strong as they are in men. So the team that published this latest paper have previously reviewed the effects of creatine supplementation on the brain. However, that review did not take into account sex and age related differences. The authors, in an attempt to fully investigate the benefits of creatine, have revisited the topic, this time to add its effects on aging and age related disorders to the field of study. The human brain at all ages requires creatine to function correctly. Unfortunately, children who cannot properly process creatine suffer from a wide range of crippling developmental disorders. Previous studies have shown that both natively produced and supplement consumed creatine are important for brain function and that creatine has its own specialized transporter, CT1, to cross the blood-brain barrier. Creatine supplementation does not seem to benefit the standard cognitive performance of younger people. However, those aged between 68 and 85 showed improvements in memory after taking a large dose for just one week. Creatine has also been shown to reduce mental fatigue in a way that suggests better handling of oxygen, and one clinical trial showed it might aid in recovery from traumatic brain injuries in children and in juveniles. Other research leads the authors to conclude that creatine aids the brain in responding to stress, such as oxygen deprivation. The researchers highlighted a woeful lack of creatine studies in human beings suffering from Alzheimer's disease. However, one rat study suggested that creatine supplementation may be negative in this case, where the disease causing creatine actually became toxic. There was a randomized clinical trial conducted on people with Parkinson's disease. While creatine was well tolerated, the trial found no discernible benefit. Another trial used creatine with coenzyme Q10, better known as CoQ10, and found that this combination maintained cognitive performance after one year. Because of creatine reuptake, some researchers actually consider creatine to be a neurotransmitter in its own right. Lower levels of creatine in the brain have been associated with mood disorders, including social anxiety disorder. Results into the effects of creatine on these disorders have been mixed, with some researchers finding it has a significant effect when in combination with an antidepressant drug, while another study showed no significant effect whatsoever. While the research covered in this review implies that creatine supplements appear to have a limited effect against brain stress, possibly including age-related brain stress, these broadly mixed and inconclusive results showcase an important lesson. The research teams say 
simply because a disorder is linked to a decrease in a vital compound does not mean that supplementing with that compound is going to be an effective treatment, especially when there are significant hurdles to getting that compound to the proper place, for example, to cross the blood-brain barrier. Additionally, the depletion of creatine in many cases appears to be an effect rather than a cause. So finding and addressing the upstream causes of these disorders is likely to be more effective than creatine supplementation alone. However, human research is extremely limited in most cases, and it may be that creatine has a significant effect on a specific disease. The team say at the moment, we do not know for sure. If you wish to get your creatine from a natural source, it can be found in just about every type of meat and fish. These are the foods that are highest in creatine. Beef has a very high creatine content, particularly steak. Creatine in steak is around five grams per kilogram of uncooked beef. Chicken has a creatine content of 3.4 grams per kilogram. In general, free range chickens have more creatine than those who are raised in cages and those who are fed a low quality diet. Pork has creatine content at around 0.7 grams per 100 grams. This makes pork an excellent choice for improving strength, increasing lean muscle mass, and helping with muscle recovery during and even after exercise. Vegans can investigate food sources that contain creatine producing amino acids, such as pumpkin seeds, sesame, seaweed, white beans, walnuts, almonds, and especially watercress. There are many suppliers of creatine, all of which you are free to research, and there are many, many variations of the compound, which do not, for the extra cost, actually improve efficacy. The most widely studied and the cheapest version is the base version, and that's creatine monohydrate. Of the big three, do not age, renew by science and pro health longevity, at present only do not age carries creatine monohydrate. They will sell you 300 grams for $24.97 American cents. That works out at around 80 cents per gram. Add to that the 10% my NMN discount code, and that drops down to around 72 cents per gram. Most people take about five grams a day, so this container would last you for two months. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. If you watched my last video, which covered my blood test results, you'll know that my creatinine levels were high and outside of the reference range. Now, I put this down to me eating a lot of red meat and also supplementing with creatine. And some of the people who commented also agreed that might be the reason. Uh, so technically, I was overdosing on creatine. Hopefully, my next blood test will show a drop in my creatinine levels because I've stopped supplementing with creatine. I've also stopped eating uh, a lot of red meat and before the vegans start to get excited that's because here in the philippines red meat in the form of steak sirloin is what i really like is insanely expensive i've now changed my diet to more chicken and pork let me know in the comments below do you supplement with creatine and if you do do you only do it for the muscle building effect or do you only do it for the brain enhancing effect or because you know about both are you doing it for both if you didn't know about the nootropic effect of creatine, will you start or will you consider possibly taking it because of the brain enhancing benefits? 